Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiast. Right off the bat on the old show today. Remember when we talked about the old Chevrolet Volt, one of the last programs? Well, General Motors has released more details. Actually, a little bit more sophistication on the details that we've already released. Now, this particular machine is going to get a brand new gasoline petrol 1.5 liter engine. That's actually normally aspirated and four cylinders. Now, this particular machine, the engine's actually going to be built outside of the United States, but production of that uh, lump will come to the United States after the first year of production. But, now let's get to all the geeky stuff, all the interesting stuff, if you will, including that brand new battery pack that they've designed for this machine. Now, they've lopped off over 100 cells in this particular battery pack, which has made it a lot more nimble as far as its size, but it's still going to be able to handle even more capacity, even more energy than the outgoing battery. And the most impressive thing about it, it's lopped off a fair amount of weight. 30 pounds of weight. And in this era of cafe standards where everybody's trying to shave off little grams and ounces of weight, man, to lop off 30 pounds is nothing to sneeze at. In fact, it's a heck of an achievement. And not only have they lost weight there, but the two-mode motor pack that's actually the electric drivetrain, if you will, for this particular machine has gone through a complete overhaul which they're claiming that upwards of 5 to 12% greater efficiency than the outgoing model. And not to mention, it's lost some weight too. 100 pounds of weight. Hugely impressive. This vehicle is going to really gain in the miles per gallon. And not to mention, that EV range when it's running in full electric mode. It would be very interesting to see how many miles this thing can go in full EV mode. We'll know a whole lot more when this vehicle makes its official debut at the Detroit Motor Show in the first part of 2015. Next up on the list, a little story that actually broke the day of this particular taping of this program. The folks over at Car and Driver are showing off that Sergio Marchione, the head of the Fiat Chrysler Group, is actually working quite diligently on the brand new five-year plan. I shouldn't call it brand new. The five-year plan came out a couple of years ago. But, and Sergio Marchione is getting closer to be on his way out, supposedly, rumor has it, at Fiat Chrysler, as he will uh, tip his hat to the company and turn it over to other folks. Now, one of the parts of this deal was going to need a fair amount of capital for this five-year plan to work to try to pump up the rest of the brands. And what better way of doing it, or at least in Sergio Marchione's mind, than to spin off one of the best-known car manufacturers on the planet to be its own standalone company. In fact, the most famous car company, as far as under the Fiat Chrysler umbrella. Yes, it's Ferrari. Ferrari will be spun off into its own company, and they're going to sell off shares in Ferrari. If you've ever wanted to own a Ferrari share, this is the time to do it. In fact... If you're already a Fiat Chrysler shareholder, guess what? You're going to get the first dibs on the 90%. The first 90% are going to be sold exclusively. Those shares are going to be sold to Fiat Chrysler shareholders. The other 10% will be sold out on the open market. Sergio Marchione's got a lot of plans for Fiat Chrysler. In fact, him and outgoing president of, of Ferrari, uh, being Luca Donamazemolo, I meant Ferrari before when I said Fiat Chrysler. But Luca Zamanzimolo actually wanted to keep Ferrari a more exclusive brand by keeping everything in-house and keeping everything somewhere around 7,500 units. But there's a lot of talk that Sergio Marchione's wants to pump that up to around 10,000 units sold per year. And if the economy's right and everything works out well, this will put a lot of cash into the coffer under the Fiat Chrysler umbrella. So it's going to be very, very interesting moving forward to see how well this does. I'm assuming that 10% is going to sell out super fast. Next up on the list, the folks over at Volvo are showing off this, a brand new power plant for the folks at this little Swedish auto manufacturer who's really well known for building some extremely safe automobiles, but not for building something like this. Something that's a little bit more extreme. This is a two-liter, four-cylinder unit that doesn't sound very extreme, other than not only is it turbocharged, 
it's supercharged as well. Yes, this vehicle is supercharged and turbocharged, meaning the supercharger unit actually works at low revs. So anything from idle on up is all the superchargers work. But once you get higher up in the RPM ranges and the turbos started to spool up, then that's when the turbos start to take over. Apparently the efficiency of this power plant is going to be amazing, or at least that's what Volvo's talking about. But the amazing thing, at least for me, the power from this unit, this tight little unit is going to make 450 prank horsepower. Yeah, that's a lot of smoke. Cannot wait to see what Volvo may have up their sleeve and what kind of vehicle this may be going into. And last up on the list, if you're a big fan of the movie franchise, The Fast and the Furious, and you're having a hard time wait till that April release date in 2015 for the movie, you're going to get your first little shot at seeing some of it. Now, I put up a little teaser shot of the whole cast and crew working on some very high-end automobiles on the Old Motor Cars Enthusiast Facebook page. But in only a handful of days, in fact, I think it's November 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, they're going to release the first trailer for the film. This film is going to be very, very interesting, especially because one of the main characters, uh, being Brian O'Connor, who was... Ooh, was Paul Walker, who actually was tragically killed in a car accident back in November of 2013, right in the middle of filming this particular franchise. So, it'll be very interesting to see how this movie turns out, and then, be more interesting, see that brand new trailer that's going to come out. If you can't find it on the old interwebs, look on the old Motor Cars Enthusiast Facebook page, because I'm sure I'm going to find it and stick it up over there. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. If you want to jump on over to that Facebook page, the link's right down there in the show notes. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.